Hi, y'all. Welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this episode, we're going to take a look at something called Notification Center. We're going to dive in and see what it is, how it works, and how it can help us when building iOS applications. All right, let's begin. The main problem Notification Center tries to solve is how to let far off distant parts of the application know when certain key local events occur. Say we have an onboarding process, for example, and we're trying to activate someone's device or their modem. If that process fails and we need to update the UI, how do we send a message from here way over to there? This is what Notification Center was built for. By defining a notification, registering it, and then posting it, we can have other parts of the application be notified when certain events way off in the distance occur. It's a great way to sync different parts of the application up and keep other parts of the application in sync that aren't readily reachable by either closures, protocol delegates, or even UI responder chains. To see the mechanics of how all this works, let's take a look at a really simple example. Okay, so firing up our demo app and continuing along with our communication patterns example, let's go down to this one called Notification Center. And here, just like all of our other fetch weather examples, we're going to fetch the weather and have it update our UI. Let's walk through the mechanics now and see how this works. Step one with Notification Center is defining a notification. And we can do that easily by just adding an extension onto notification name giving it the name of the notification we'd like, in this case, did fetch weather, and that's step one. Once we've got that defined, now we need to make this view controller register for it. So I'm in the notification view controller. This is all standard view controller stuff, view did load. And in here, we can register this view controller to add itself as an observer listening for that did fetch weather notification. So a couple interesting things here. One is we need to add ourselves as an observer. Two, we need to say what selector or function would we like executed when that notification comes in. And then finally, three, just the name of the notification itself. So in this case, we're saying perform did fetch weather. That's going to fire when this event occurs. That's really what we're doing by registering. So now let's walk through and see what actually happens when we push that button and how the notification works. So weather pressed is hooked up to this button via a target action. So when we hit that button, we are going to execute this code here, which is instantiating a weather service and then calling fetch weather on it. Now fetch weather, we're going to have communicate back to our view controller here via a notification. And we do that just like this. First, we decide what object we want to send back as part of this no notification. You don't actually have to send anything back, but in this case, we want to send back the weather object. So we're going to create weather, and now note how we send it back. This goes back in a user info dictionary. So just a key value pair, the key is weather. That's the thing that we're going to put this weather object into the dictionary as. Weather is the object. And then here's the magic right here, notification center default post. This is where we're posting our notification did fetch weather. We could optionally pass in ourselves as the object sending it. I'm ch I've chosen not to, I'm passing nil here. And then finally, the data is gonna go back as part of this user info. So when we fire that, because we've registered it for up here, we're gonna execute this code, perform did fetch weather. So it's gonna go post, it's gonna come up here, we can then unpack or extract the weather from the user info object, and then we're free to do with it whatever we want. In this case, update our view, which then updates the corresponding labels and images. And that, in a nutshell, is how a Notification Center works. All right, so what are some of the pros and cons of Notification Center? Well, some of the pros are really obvious. One, it's really nice that we don't need any direct connection between the receiver and the sender. This is really the observer pattern at its heart. And it's really nice that we can have one or even many observers out there looking for events that can fire off in completely different parts of the application. That's the real strength of the notification center, loose coupling, and it's also really simple and easy to use. Now the cons, well, sometimes the control flow can be a little bit not obvious. If you've ever worked with an application that uses a ton of eventing or the observer pattern, you've really got to be careful what you're firing and where. 
And if you built an entire application using nothing but Notification Center, you could see how it'd be a little bit confusing keeping track of which events are firing and what's going on. Not to mention it kind of being a little bit harder to debug because these things aren't directly connected like a protocol delegate and these things do fire off and you've really got to be careful and understand where certain things are going. So in terms of recommendations, absolutely use Notification Center. It's a great way to let other far parts of the application know when certain key events occur, but do use it more sparingly. Don't reach for it first and favor the more concrete direct methods of communi communicating things like closures, protocol delegates, even responder chain. Those are very direct. Those are very simple to use also. And you should use notification center more reserved just for those cases where you do need to broadcast something system wide to let far off other parts of the application know when certain events have occurred. Okay, so that's just a really simple example of a walkthrough of Notification Center. If you like this or you've got questions about other communication patterns, be sure to check out some of the previous videos where we do go over protocol delegate responder chain and some of those other things I alluded to. But um, hopefully this is a simple walkthrough. You understand how it works and all the source code, of course, is available. So be sure to check that out. And uh, if you like the channel, please do hit subscribe. Okay, take care, everyone. We'll see you next time.